Let me ask you something, Collector Dexter. Are there any Pokemon professors that could possibly be as smart as you? An incredibly established and accredited smart guy in your field. You know, I don't really like to toot my own horn, but, uh, I think I'm probably the best around. I mean, sure, many of the professors are like heroes to me, but the student has long surpassed the master when it comes to my peers and I. Well, that does sound about right. I've spent enough time around you in your laboratory to know just how good you are at all this science stuff. However, comparing you to your peers makes me wonder, who is the smartest Pokemon professor in the games? They're all masters of a different type of science in the world of Pokemon, some focusing on evolution and others on moves, but who exactly holds the title of being the smartest? I guess today we'll figure that out. Also, uh, to avoid controversy, I'll edit this video since I can be unbiased about the subject. I think that sounds like an excellent idea, Prime Boy Me Tops. So I think we'll just go in the order of these professors, list out their accomplishments, and then come to one grand conclusion at the end of the video. So naturally, we should start off with the OG Professor Oak. Pokemon love him. Other professors want to be him. His line of research is kind of more simplistic in nature as he just studies Pokemon in general, but what's that old saying again? A jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. While technically the idea of the Pokedex is linked to another professor on this list, Oak did invent the first iteration of a digital Pokedex, increasing research convenience several times over. Other than that, it seems he was an accomplished Pokemon trainer before settling down and going the researcher route of things, much to the dismay of his childhood friend Agatha. But yeah, that seems to be where the convo stops on old Samuel Oak. You know, I'm just saying, Professor Oak reminds me a lot of Dr. Phil. He just seems like a guy who did one thing that a lot of people know him for, and now he gets spots on the radio and TV and everyone loves him, even though maybe he doesn't deserve it. You know who does deserve that sort of attention? The great Professor Elm. One of my favorites in the franchise. Think about how important breeding has become to the player base. Well, Elm is the utmost authority on eggs and all of the stuff surrounding them, and also on evolution in general. This guy, on his own, figured out that Pokemon lay eggs which is a little weird considering you'd think that someone who would have noticed eggs were a thing long before Elm did, but that's not the point. He does sort of jump from one bit of work to another in an ADHD sort of way, but, you know, being very scatterbrained and a bit disorganized, that just might play big into the argument that he is incredibly intelligent. I mean, he obviously invests a lot of time into his research and the like, and thus can't spend time cleaning or sticking to any one thing with that research. We don't get to learn much more about him, though, aside from the basics, but it can be inferred from his personality and, of course, the fact that he is an expert at something so important that he is right up there among the smartest professors in the games. You know, I guess I get where you're coming from with Oak, but I gotta say, I do not like it. I can definitely find myself relating to Elm in the scatterbrain and disorganized department, so he truly does have some of the marks of a genius in him there. But how about we move on to another professor I can relate to in a way, Professor Birch. I mean, we're both more on the portly side of things, and uh, well that seems to be about it, aside from smarts. So Birch may not seem like much on the surface, but he absolutely is a top tier professor. His field of research is primarily on how Pokemon behave in the wild, but does not seem to be limited there at all. This is evident by the books he has written over the years. The History of the Hoenn Region, The Ecosystem of Pokemon 3,000 Years Ago, The Pokemon of Kalos and Hoenn, The Coexistence of People and Pokemon, Distribution of Pokemon Species, National Edition, and The Fieldwork 101. So, he knows the history of his region, ancient ecosystems, the Pokemon of two different regions, basically all of Professor Oak's life, work and more. Honestly, seems like quite the accomplished fellow. I do think perhaps Birch is a bit underrated. I mean, you never hear his name really spoken about in conversation when it comes to this sort of topic. But the next professor to get spoken about in this video shall be Professor Rowan, who is also all about Pokemon evolution and the form changes that Pokemon can undergo. It kind of makes me wonder why they wouldn't just uh, make a few regional variants available in BDSP, since it would be in line with what Rowan studied, but, you know, it's whatever. It's crazy to think, but Rowan actually managed to discover that 90% of all Pokemon are connected evolutionary in some way. He posed the question, is a Pokemon's evolution a part of maturity, or simply something that is incomplete, becoming completed? Uh, we also know of him as being one of the oldest professors we've been introduced to, and you know what they say, with age comes wisdom. I think being able to go back and discover that all Pokemon seem to share a common ancestor probably means you're a bit of an intelligent guy, wouldn't you say, Collector? I mean, Rowan seems to be the Pokemon world's very own Darwin in that sense, so he's definitely up there with the best of them. But you know, the Land of Sinnoh had another great mind working for it. Let me take you all the way back to when Sinnoh was called Hisui with the great Professor Leventon. As far as I'm concerned, Leventon just may be the professor that inspired the professor that inspired so many more professors. 
I mean, he brought forth the OG Pokedex, which sure is just asking a child that fell from the sky to collect data on creatures he hasn't really interacted with most of his life, but still, it was his idea. However, that bears the question, was he really that great? I mean, just because you're the first to do something doesn't necessarily make you the best at it. I guess we definitely can say he's one of the most important men in Pokemon, but I don't think that necessarily correlates to how much of a genius he may be. Now, in the fifth generation, we have Professor Juniper, and to a lesser extent, her dad, Cedric. I'll just say now, we know pretty much nothing of major note about Cedric Juniper, so I'll just have to assume he's a complete moron, and thus in the last place on this list. That's not really a list, now that I think about it. But anyway, with Juniper, she studies the origins of Pokemon, which adds into the pattern where one professor after another seems to be studying something more major than the last. She wants to know when and how Pokemon came to be, though you'd have to figure Rowan has a pretty good idea about that already, since he was able to trace back those 90% of Pokemon to sharing an ancestor. Honestly, it sort of feels like the whole Origins of Pokemon thing is something our old man from Sinnoh probably has a pretty firm grasp on. I guess I can't really think of anything that sets Juniper that much apart from her contemporaries, so that doesn't bode well for her taking home the smartest title today. Well, next on our list is Professor Sycamore, an attractive man with the goal of researching one of the craziest things in the entire world of Pokemon, being Mega Evolutions. As a pupil of Professor Rowan, it makes sense that Sycamore would continue his research in the field of form changes, but this is to a much grander level. He theorized that megastones came about from a variety of evolutionary stones being irradiated from the usage of the ultimate weapon from over 3,000 years ago, and throughout X and Y, you help Sycamore discover that mega evolution comes about from a strong bond shared between Trainer and their Pokémon. Now, that poses a lot of questions for why these evolutions are only temporary and why they're not considered just new Pokemon while in those forms, but I suppose that's a question for another day. Being that it was just a theory and clearly no other professor has really gotten on the mega research train, it's hard to say just how smart he is. However, I really would like to see it be touched upon in the future. Maybe have a glance at his notes and just see how right or wrong he ended up being. Well, we've come so far, so it's time to talk about the most interesting professor of them all. The guy who just studies moves, Kukui. Alright, so maybe he's not the most interesting, but close enough, right? Though, right away, I will say I don't think anyone who willingly gets hit with Pokemon moves is all that smart. There's so many better ways to see the power and abilities of a Pokemon's moves. What's the point of getting hit with them yourself? It's gonna hurt. He does seem to be the most accomplished battler of all the professors to this point, though, as you have to take him on in Sun and Moon to become the champion of Alola. Also, he spends a lot of time as a wrestler portraying the masked royale, so it kind of makes you wonder where he ever finds the time to actually get research done. I think it's kind of safe to say Kukui is written out of the smartest discussion as well. Well, that's a little rude. Pokemon moves are interesting. I think you're being a little unfair to the good professor. I mean, maybe getting hit repeatedly will affect his cognitive functions in the future, but the research needs to be done. But let us continue the research in Alola as we have two more professors to talk about. There's of course Kukui's wife, Burnett, who has had multiple fields of studies. Back in Gen 5, she studied Pokemon's dreams, and more specifically, the inter-dream zone, the space between dreams and reality. So yeah, all of those paralysis demons you see are actually Pokemon, and Burnett is just trying to learn more about them. But she also studies other dimensions in Alola, specifically the Ultra Wormholes and Ultra Beasts that come through them. Being that was kind of the main basis for the story of the Alola games, I guess you could view her as the most important professor there. There's also the cousin to Samuel Oak in Samson Oak, a professor that researches regional variants and totem Pokemon. Now, he doesn't ever really come to any particular conclusion about why totems are the way they are, but he does tend to go into depth about regional variants and how they came about in Alola, so it's obvious that's his primary form of research. Again, going down the Darwin route here in Pokemon, and it's really nice to see. Samson Oak, while being a bit player, seems to be pretty intelligent and shows it a lot more so than others in the field of form changes. Wow, there are definitely more professors than I remembered in Alola, but there's also technically more than one in Sword and Shield, too. Sonya and Magnolia are the professors in Galar, though I guess the latter ends up retired by the end of the story. Magnolia was investigating the Dynamax phenomenon, which seems the most straightforward. Pillars of Light known as Dynamax energy allow Pokemon to get bigger, and that's really all there was to it. No weird, mysterious items like a Megastone or dumb dancing like with Z-moves are needed. It just seems like she decided to explore the idea of Dynamax particles, and from there, explain the phenomenon a bit. She does, to her credit, great Dynamax bands with the usage of Wishing Stars, so there is that. As for Sonya, she merely studies the past of Galar, and that's not exactly a scientific gig. She figured out the connection and existence of Zossi and Zamazenta and Eternatus, which she was able to write about and then become a professor based off of those findings. Honestly, she didn't seem to really do all that much during the title, but that does not stop me from loving her. More like the simp directive, am I right? 
<laughs> well then, I guess that brings us to our latest additions of professors to the franchise, being Professor Sada and Toro, each being the region's highest regarded researcher in whichever game you play. Now there's far more to these professors than probably any other to date, giving them a ton of backstory. They both are the parents of your classmate Arvin, with neither of them being on good terms with him. Their backstories match up in the sense that one abandoned the family while the other was so involved in their work that they completely neglected their child. For the vast majority of Scarlet and Violet, they just kind of encourage you in helping restore the cover legendaries back to their original glory as well as their involvement with the Tarassal Phenomenon and the mysterious Area Zero. By the very end of the game, you do discover that the Professor of your version has in fact passed away when trying to protect your ride Pokémon. But that's okay. See, before this fatal event, they needed help with their research after their significant other left. So they did what anyone would do, upload their brain to an artificial intelligence, living as a second version of themselves for help. Oh, and uh... They built a time machine out of a DeLorean? I mean, some crystals? Using this time machine, they drew Pokemon from the ancient past or the far off future and sought to create a world in which they could live in harmony with the present day people and Pokemon. However, with the Paradox Pokemon being a little dangerous and unstable in the modern day, the AI requested help in shutting down the time machine before eventually sending themselves to the period they wished to see. So, uh, yeah. What do you think about all of this, Prime? Yeah, I have to agree that Paradox Pokemon are indeed very dangerous, and what I truly think is that we've got our winners! Sada and Turo, one way or another, harness the power of crystals to not only allow us to change our Pokemon's typing in battle, or enhance their stab moves, but also travel through time. That's nothing short of a miracle, and these folks were actually smart enough to achieve what many would assume to be impossible. We know a Pokemon like Celebi can travel through time, but, but people just being able to do it without the need for a Pokemon's help? It, it really, if nothing else, just gets me really creeped out about just how powerful these crystals are. I mean, it takes a genius to use their power to facilitate time travel, but gosh, man, it's really not even a contest, though. While I may have thought Rowan was perhaps the one to give the title to, Sada and Turo just tipped it right into their favor and out of this old man's hands. Now I just wish we could have used that time machine for ourselves. You know, since Kabutops are Pokemon from millions of years ago, are you a Paradox Pokemon? Do I, do I need to send you back to the past? No! I may come from the past, but my species has already acclimated itself to the modern day. Also, I'm actually a guy in his 20s that got trapped in this body, so I'm actually not that old at all. You know, I'm starting to think this 20-year-old real guy body of yours doesn't even exist. I mean, who would name their human baby the Prime Directive? Anyways, I agree with you. There's no contest. Sada and Turo are indeed the smartest professors we've ever had. I know you were giving a lot of props to Rowan, but I personally felt that Burnett and Birch were major contenders for quite a bit, but I get what you see in him. But you know what? No one is as smart as me. And that's a Collector Dexter guarantee. So, what do you all think? Do you believe that Sada and Turo are the smartest professors, dead or alive? Or are you an idiot? Let us know in the comments below. And until next time, I'm Collector Dexter. And I'm the Prime Directive. And we'll see you all in that time and place that I already said.